Let's talk about the problem with camera bag videos and why you probably shouldn't watch them, including this one. Now, if you've ever watched a photo video person on YouTube, you'll know that they're pretty obsessed with gear, and rightly so. I mean, gear is fun. It's fun to buy, it's fun to use, and it's really fun to talk about. But weirdly, they seem to actually like talking about organizing gear almost as much as actually using it. And we've all seen those what's in my camera bag videos, and I must admit, some of them are quite satisfying, but I think if you're someone that's kind of starting out in photo video, they can be quite misleading, actually. So to illustrate why you shouldn't pay too much attention to camera bag videos, I'm gonna make my own camera bag video. Yep, today we're taking hypocrisy and turning it to another level. All right, so I only actually brought one camera today, so I'm going to record it all, and then I'm gonna record it again. But to you, it's gonna look like one seamless. So I'm gonna start by just running through everything that I carry with me, and as I go along, just kind of talking about some of the things that I consider, some of the things I think about, and how I think that differs from a lot of the messages that are maybe delivered with typical camera bag videos that you might see on YouTube. I hope that makes sense. So the bag itself is the Brevity Jumper Backpack. I'm gonna go into more details on this at the end of the video, but for now, I just wanna focus on what's inside it. Best thing about this bag is I, I didn't have to pay for it. Thanks, Brevity. So first things first, in the top of the bag, where you typically see a camera cube, you'll see something very similar, and this is where the main camera goes. Now, the main difference between this and a camera cube is that this is actually a bag in itself. And while this might not look like the best use of space, there's two reasons why I do this. One is that it gives you the option to actually divide up your kit a little bit. And I was traveling to Milwaukee a couple of weeks ago to see the Bucks game. Side note, front row seats, unbelievable experience. Take a look at some of these shots. But anyway, we were flying to Chicago and I needed the extra space for extra things I'm traveling. So all I did was take this bag, had this around my shoulder, and it's small enough that you can hide it in your jacket, the, the flight attendants don't really realize, and you get all that additional space in your bag. And the second point is, is when once I got to Chicago, I didn't wanna to have to carry around all of my kit, my traveling gear, everything that was in this bag. I just wanted to go out quickly at night and take some photos. So all I do is I take this out, put my camera in there, or potentially carry the camera and have a second lens in here. Have this. Just around my shoulder. And then that is kind of like your day pack, your, your, your little expedition bag, I guess, when you don't need to fully carry your full kit. You just carry a camera, maybe a spare battery, a lens cloth, or maybe a spare telephoto lens in here and you're carrying the camera. It, it boggles my mind how often I use this, like all the time. So that is the purpose behind that. In here, you do have a pocket. Uh, it's pretty much empty. The only thing that's in there is, is masks, which I actually haven't needed, so I'm probably gonna take those out. But when you're traveling, you, you never know. So moving to the main compartment now, I'm gonna open up this back portion here, and voila, what you'll see is really not that much. Secondary lens, this is a 70 to 180 Tamron. I carry this everywhere. Like I, I sort of switch between using different primes, 35, 85, but I've always gone with having a telephoto and a wide angle when I'm shooting. I typically carry, by the way, side note, but I typically carry two lenses only. I used to be one of those guys that carried like three or four and I would try different things and different angles, but trust me, if you're just going out for like a, like me, I'm a, more of a run and gun shooter, two lenses is plenty. And just so you know, the secondary lens I use is the 20 mm f 1.8. So those two lenses in combination with the crop factor on the Sony, if you want to, this is a full frame Sony, so you can crop in, use the Super 35 mode. I have between 20 to 30 on the 20 mil, and then here I have 70 to essentially 270. So 20 to 270, that little range in the middle, 30 to 70 is not that commonly used by myself, so I'm fine with that. So what I've talked about so far is what I call the core kit, the camera, the lens, the lens, and of course the, the microphone that's on the camera. Other than that, everything else, is pretty much optional. So the way I've organized this, you'll see at the bottom, there's like a tiny little gap in the bag, and that's just where I chuck all random bits and bobs, usually batteries. Here I've got the drone battery, the Sony battery, drone filters, uh, and that's also where cables go when I'm traveling. The other section of this main compartment is kind of like the, the core plus. This is stuff that 
will change depending on what I'm doing. But there's usually something in here. In some cases, I'm just going out for the day and I just want to take my camera. Then the camera goes in here. And then this is just storage if I want to buy anything or carry my jumper or something. Today, you'll see there's a drone in here because I, I wanted to fly my drone outside. But sometimes if I'm doing portraits, then maybe it's the 85 and the 35 that sort of go in there side by side. Uh, sometimes I'm shooting macro, in which gets the macro lens. Whatever I need to put in there is just, that's, that's what that's for. And you'll notice that there is like this additional box in here. If you watched my video from a few weeks ago, you'll see that I, I made this in that video. And the purpose behind this originally was that it was something, something that you could swap in and out. So you'd have multiples of these and you'd have them full of stuff. And then you could just like whoop, put them in and out. Um, I quickly realized that actually it took just as long to do that as it did to just change the contents of the box. Um, but I, I still keep it in there for, for a number of reasons, actually. One being that this bag, it's, it's a camera bag, but it's designed like a backpack. So it doesn't have that rigidity that a typical camera bag has. So if you take this out, everything just kind of starts to collapse. So I found that having this in actually gives it a nice structure that then everything stays in its place. Even though it's adding a little bit of weight, it's, it's really quite helpful. And then the second thing is, if I close this up, one of the selling points of this bag is the side access. The idea is you're supposed to put your camera in there so you can quickly get at it. What I realized was that it was, it was far too easy to get to. All you needed was to walk around, someone to hold onto this tab, and that thing just opens right up and your $6,000 camera just falls out the side. So what I actually did was I decided putting that box in there, blocks that over. I've taken the pull tab off of this, so it's harder to open. And uh, yeah, that to me, major security risk. I didn't like having that. I felt like I was constantly checking it. And I just, I really, I really didn't want that. So I've actually just covered it over and having that little box in there prevents anyone really getting in. Finally, front pocket. This is pretty much empty, to be honest. The biggest thing that goes in here is the microphone, which is currently on the camera. I switched recently to the Sennheiser MKE 400, I think. I used to have the Rode Video Mic Pro, like every other YouTuber. It's good, it's a good quality microphone, but to me, the design is just a bit dated at this point. It's huge, that was the main issue with it. It takes up so much space in your camera bag, and when it's on the camera, your camera is like twice the height, and it just feels like a monster, and it's flopping around, and the cables, I just got really fed up with the, and, and I saw so I didn't have the Pro, so it had, I had to keep turning it on and off, and I honestly, I just, I just put like 150 bucks into a new, into a new one and it's so much better. It's so slimline, it's so sleek. It just slots right in here. And when it's on the camera, it turns on automatically. And I haven't noticed any real drop in quality. So yeah, I think um, Sennheiser really are taking the, taking the biscuit for all portable microphones right now. The other thing in here is a filter case. You would have seen that I had a filter case that I made. And I used to put my uh, my mist filter, my ND filter in there and have them stacked. This is one of the things that I noticed with a lot of these uh, YouTubers. They tell you buy the biggest filter for the biggest lens you have and then step up, bring it to everything else. It's more affordable, it's, it's more convenient, it's more practical. Well, it might be more affordable, but it definitely isn't more practical. Using these two lenses, I realized I was walking around with like this huge collection of step up rings. I was stacking two filters on top of each other and it was just a pain in the ass once you put trying to screw it onto the lens and you had this like stupid thing sticking out the front and it's like huge. And then I was getting vignetting because this is a wide angle. And it took me probably way too long to realize that this lens and this lens both have the same filter thread, 67. And I had an 82 that I kept adapting to both of them. <sighs> so long story short, I went out and bought a mist VND filter, kind of like the Polar Pro one, but cheaper from KNF. 67 millimeter thread. I can just thread that on, it takes two seconds. Uh, it's way more convenient. And it came with this nice carrying case, which is magnetic. So I just keep it in that. I slot that down in here and I have the flap hanging over the front so I can just easily undo the magnet, pull it out, close it up. It, I too fall into the trap of listening to YouTubers a bit too much. Other than that, dead cat for the microphone and of course the essential cleaning cloth. And that's, that's literally it. So the main difference I would say between like what I carry and the typical like what's in my camera bag video is just the lack of what I'm calling knickknacks, like accessories, travel adapters, different little plugs and, and cables and different types of, I think what it boils down to is, it's a couple of things. Like one, 
how your camera bag looks when you open it. Like people put too much emphasis on that. The trick is, is how easily can I get the thing that I need out without having to look around and pulling out different pouches and unzipping pouches and opening the pouch and then trust me, I fell into that trap. Believe me, I have no end to those useless pouches. I bought a pouch, a, a padded foam protecting case for my GoPro that people put on dirt bikes and on jet skis and all sorts of shit because they're indestructible and there I am putting it in a padded case. I don't say this to rag on other people. I say this because I've done this myself. And when you stop and you think, it's just fucking stupid. The other difference I think comes to really a, an approach, difference in approach, okay? The average person and a lot of these videos I've seen, it's all about optimizing your camera bag. It's like, how can I fill the space in my camera bag? I need space. What if I wanna go out and buy something? I need to put it in here. Today. I had to go out and buy batteries. I, so I put them in my bag because there's space in my bag. If you fill every single nook and cranny of your bag, there's no space for anything else. So as satisfying as it is to be able to play Tetris with your camera bag because it's fun, there really is no reason. And I'm not saying this to rag on people that do that. Fair enough, if you find that fun, you find that interesting, then that's cool. And like I say, I like watching them. It is fun. All right, I've lost my train of thought now. Mind blank. Yeah, so what I would suggest and my, my recommendation from me, you know, as what I am, which is a guy who likes to take pictures and make videos and I'm not very good at it, but it's fun and I, I feel like the kit I use now tailors very well to my needs is like do the opposite of what you think you should do. Start with nothing and then think, what do I need to put in here, okay? Maybe it's just a lens and a camera. That's it, okay, good. Do that, just keep the space. I used to walk around with an empty backpack, it was literally empty. All it had was a camera cube in the bottom for my camera if I decided I didn't want to carry it anymore. But I just carried the camera. Your hand is also a way of carrying things. Oh, and side note. This thing, just buy one. I'm not even gonna tell you why, just buy it. Okay, I probably should tell you why. This thing is awesome. So, it's just, it's like a, it's like a bracelet, right? Clip to your camera and you are invincible. Your cam, well, your camera is invincible. Probably, probably not you. Don't, don't walk out in front of a bus or something. Point is, you're like hanging over a waterfall or a building in Chicago. You're hanging out over like I, those are things I did. This gives you one less thing to worry about. You're not clutching to your camera, trying to like hold it steady. And and trust me, having this, if you're in a dodgy neighborhood as well, you just feel a bit safer. Or if you just need to like let your camera down for a second, let it hang while you do something else. Just, I, this thing goes with me everywhere that the camera goes. It's just so, so out of the way. It's not like a strap where it's like dangling from the camera. It's just, it's just there. It's just, get one. Peak design, best thing they've ever made. Uh, and speaking of which, I'm digressing again, but like uh, beetle clip on here. It's the PG Tech version of the capture clip from Peak Design. I bought this because compared to the Peak Design, it's cheaper and it's not out of stock everywhere in Canada. <sighs> okay, well, that's one angle. Now I've got to film the whole thing again. Oh, and I, I probably feel like I should talk about the bag a little bit just because I know that this bag is like increasing in popularity lately. It's become, you probably see it all over social media. Everyone's talking about it and that's because these guys like giving them out for free. But that's because this thing is awesome. But in all seriousness, they did send this to me. I'm under absolutely zero obligation to say anything about it, but I, I do appreciate the gesture and this has actually become my daily driver now. So I just want to talk about it a little bit. It's it's essentially a bag, a camera bag that's been designed to look like a backpack. That's, that's kind of their selling point. It's a covert camera bag. People are less likely to steal stuff out of it because it doesn't look like a camera bag. Although I'm slightly concerned about that notion because it's becoming so popular now that if I were a thief, I'd probably have found out that this is actually a camera bag. Also, the illusion is completely destroyed the moment you put a tripod on the side, which typically I do. 
so I wouldn't buy it for that reason alone, honestly. But the fact that it does look like a bag means that it's quite versatile and that if you're not carrying camera stuff, or you just want to use it as like a daily backpack, then you can do that as well. So it, it does help. Just quickly, really quickly running through the features. You have a tripod section here. Typically the tripod lives in there, but it's, it's filming. And on this side, you have your, like I mentioned earlier, your quick access, you know, gone in 60 seconds quick. Uh, it's kind of with the front as well. This whole thing is like front access. There's no, there's no rear access on this. Um, like there's, there's so many zips that, that it's kind of like Sophie's choice for, you know, if you're a thief, you could just pick any one of these and there's probably gonna be something expensive in it. Uh, that, that's kind of my problem with this. Uh, so I do find myself like constantly checking, like checking the zips, um, but it does have some nice features. It has a back, like a rear sleeve here for, oh, there's a book in here. <sighs> Whoop. Look, I'm like every other YouTuber, but no, seriously, great book. Uh, but this is actually laptop sleeves, typically where my, my Mac Pro would go. Um, and then I like this little pocket. This is cool because you have like a little access here. So when I'm traveling, that's that's where my passport goes. Probably shouldn't have said that on the internet. And then here you do have a uh, for like luggage. Um, I don't carry Willy luggage usually, so I don't really care about that. So, you know, I like the fact that this thing is like backpacky. It looks pretty cool. I like the fact that it's it holds good amount of stuff for daily use. Anything bigger, I think, is just too big for like my day to day. I don't, I don't need something that's huge. Um, this thing, this tripod thing, is like it's okay. It, it doesn't hold all that well, but like it's, it does the job. And then I do like the top access. It has that little zip in there, and then it has the same feature as like some of the other bags you've seen, like maybe the, the McKinnon version of the Nomadic, um, where you can like undo the bottom part and open it out. So then the whole thing is just like one big compartment from the inside. I've never needed to do that, nor I think will I ever need to do that. But the option is there if you just want to use it as like a traditional backpack. So anyway, that's that's pretty much it. Like, it looks pretty cool. Um, you know, that's one of the main selling points, I guess. But uh, yeah, that's, that's all I have to say actually. So, so anyway, what was the purpose of this video? A another approach. I mean, if you watch this channel, that's pretty much what I do. It's giving you another look on something that maybe you've looked at too many times from a certain lens before. That's pretty much it. But uh, I think too many people all too often, myself included, we, we get too wrapped up with seeing and trying to replicate what other people are doing. We see, you know, ah, oh, that guy's carrying, like, look how efficient he is. Look at how much stuff he managed to fit in that top pocket. He has like three lenses and a camera and his kitchen sink and like fucking solid gold bar and like, you know, to, to... also it kind of matches my, my, my phone and my everything else, you know. I'm really digging green lately, actually. I, I don't know what it is, it's just everything. Green everything is just, whew. Anyway, I hope you appreciated this like slightly different take on a trend that honestly probably ended like two years ago, actually. James, you're a bit. A bit behind. I don't know, do people even talk about camera bags anymore? Am I just like flogging a dead horse? I hope you appreciated the video. If you did, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and please hit the bell notification. I got, I honestly, I've never really checked my analytics. I just kind of make videos and see what happens. But I realized that the, I think it's like 95% of my views aren't from subscribers. So like, if you're watching this, then just tick the, Tick the bell thing, because apparently YouTube just doesn't give a shit about telling people unless you do that. So if you could, it'd be really appreciated because more of these types of videos. Every anyway, take care of yourself. See you next time. Which way is out?